Gene Doll Studios presents the More Better Narrative Podcast. This is episode 89 with Peter McMurtry, Rob Fusco, Mike Wahlberg, and Pizza. I'm going to be rude and start with the pizza. Yeah, no, no, get in there. Very hungry. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be sure. You know what the pizza's there for? For the eatings? For observing? Yes. We're keeping an eye on it. We're keeping an eye on it, making sure that it does not take over the universe. Thank you. Oh, it's going to take over my universe, like, right goddamn now. Yeah. Nice. You can introduce yourself, or we just kind of... Oh, yeah. Hi! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how BJ introduces himself in parties. I'm Rob, I'm Rob Fusco, uh, I'm mage, mage extraordinaire. I'm BJ McMurtry, and we have magic cards and pizza. Oh, I'm a level 20 pizza mancer. Let's fucking yes. do this. <laughs> oh, this looks like a lot of fun. So, for we those have, of you who we didn't have, know. We have John's Papa's. Mm-hmm. We have John's Papa's. Chrissy is outside with the youngling. Yep. With Luke because he decided to freak out. He was asleep the entire time he was in the car and like you know. And he, then he went a duty in his pants. Yeah, he, he sure did. You missed out on all that fun. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> so what's up, guys? Oh yeah. Hey, we have a couple emails, and they're not really? that weird this time. Let's get in there. Actually, what's really funny is two of the emails are in direct result of Matt emailing. Uh, <clears throat> one of them stating, <laughs> one of them stating that uh, last week's question by Matt Weed was a quote unquote total buzzkill. I don't even remember that? what it was. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's break this out. All right. So, Hi, last week's leaks weeks and cut Matt action. Now I'm a Gianna. I'm just a banana. <laughs> I'm just a banana. <laughs> Uh, oh, he asks, um, uh, to what extent does people's shame about their own hidden preferences contribute to internet trolling generally and gay mm. bashing specifically? <clears throat> that was the question he asked. Oh, I see. Okay. And, um, Andrew Forrester emailed, uh, saying, Hey, I felt like contributing something. As cool as the concept of Matt Weed actually doing something for the podcast, it was actually among the biggest buzzkills I've heard on this podcast. Uh-huh. Let's, uh, uh, hold on a second. Mm-hmm. Let us move this away from directly in front of the camera <laughs> so that when we go get more pizza... There we go. Well Perfect. done! <laughs> oh. Pizza box will eat your hand. Yes. <laughs> nom nom nom. Anyway. Okay, so... Question uh, first, what is it? Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I've brought, I've bought numerous books showing concept arts and the themes slash sets slash model designs for different films and games, as well as watching lots of making of videos and commentaries. I've been really into development of visual ideas, move, uh, been really into the development of visual ideas, uh, moving from concept to reality, though I feel like that sort of thing is really underappreciated, especially now. So what are your favorite themes and sets from any form of media? Generally, I love cyberpunk, but it's the sort of thing that translates much better into animation. Um, and are there any movies with really really awesome art styles that you like, even though the movie really kind of sucks, i.e. Prometheus? See, I'm the ending of Prometheus... You know, I didn't like. I've said that before. And the more I think back on the actual movie, like the more problems came up. But I'm not on this hate train that Prometheus has of just like, oh my god, fucking really Scott fucked up this whole thing. Ba 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 ba. Um. That being said, I don't know. Uh, any like, I guess I'm. I have far more of a preference for like, fairy, kind of like almost grayscale or like monotone brown like dystopian or like se- like sepia tone sepia tone aren't you all fucking smart mm. um like limbo limbo has like some of the best atmosphere in a game and it's that was an awesome game white. it's very it's a 2d side scroller that is incredibly creepy it's so fun <clears throat> i like dead space 
Dead Space. They cool. ma- didn't they make a movie of that? I haven't seen it, but I've heard mixed. They made an animated movie. Animated movie? It. Do you know if it was good? It was okay. It's Speaking like... of animated movies being made into real movies, Akira. Yes. Have you seen that? I haven't seen. Oh my god! Isn't there a trailer out yeah. now? Yeah. Is that it's... a real thing or is that like a fan? It's thing? It's like a fan thing that they're trying to get kickstarted or whatever. Hmm. But they did such a good job. It like it looks legit, like for real legit. I'm like, whoa, this mm-hmm. needs to happen. Oh. I so what they don't get me wrong, what they did was really awesome, but at the same time it's just like couldn't they have used this for something new? Like some sort of new story? Like Right. That's this is kind of the you know, the trap that fandom falls into. Like they worship what they love so much that yeah, they're terrified to stray from that. Take take uh into consideration, uh and it's kind of gone down a lot. Like when I was in high school, um, fanfilms.net mm-hmm. was like a big thing that I went to a lot. One of my first visual effects that I ever did for for video was lightsaber effects. Um, but that website was nothing but uh, fan films based off of Star Wars, and they had um like various. Uh, stories of their own, but they never strayed. Starting, I have enough. Thank you. Uh, they never strayed and did their own type of effects. So it'd be like, if you saw any of these films, like these short films that people are making, it was always like this nice, interesting story somehow tying into their love for Star Wars. But it was always like elaborate green screen sets and lightsabers, mm-hmm. and that was it. Maybe like force powers but it was that same thing it wasn't like i think the most the most somebody strayed from that was i think they made like a lightsaber whip or something interesting that was interesting but it was always like the same effects over and over again um whereas when you look at stuff like videocopilot.net that now is like them and like a couple others are now the leading website in like free tutorial special effects all this kind of thing did you ever check out not yet. the Dude, boot camp doing, thing <laughs> this week I, the earliest i went to sleep this week is 2 30 in the morning Ooh. and that was like one night and every other night has been like 3 or 3 30 in the morning and waking up at 7 and trying to get this piece done so like not yet i want to mm. i very much want to because i have something coming up that definitely when you get the time sit down and go through that it's awesome chinese dentist time <laughs> But they, uh... That's really funny. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'd like to see stuff that... Like, people's interpretations of certain effects uh, and styles and all that sort of thing relating to their fandom, like you were saying, but put into something else. I, instead of just recreating. For shorts, I don't mind. Shorts, you know, shorts still take a, a hell of a lot of effort. Mm-hmm. But their shorts, like... It's for people to learn. It's, you know, like you said, it, even if everybody's doing lightsaber effects, it's still a viable, yeah. you know, thing to learn. There's only yeah. so many, only so many lightsaber effects videos you can watch until it's just like... Ugh. Right. It just becomes, you know, like, SFX 101. That is so fucking gross. <laughs> but see, yeah. it's to the point where, like, you don't even need... <laughs> You don't oh. even need to do a lot of the the uh, the rotoscoping anymore. There's like plugins people have created that you just kind of throw it on. I'm and, sorry, I'm and so you have sorry. A, and you have a lightsaber there already. Like Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Thank you. This pepperoncini right there. Like my first my first ever effect that I did with lightsabers wasn't even in After Effects or like a video program. The uh First effect I ever did was the lightsaber thing, and I did that shit frame by frame in Photoshop. Wow. Oof. And then exported exported it as a video. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> you had way more time on your hands than anyone else. But the other the, the other thing was it, I uh I was stupid and didn't shoot it at 24 frames per second. It was at 30 video. Oh. So I did it was it was three seconds of video, th- three or four seconds of video of me flipping a lightsaber around in my living room, and it took me like. Are you the Star Wars kid? No. 
No. But Matt's made fun of me for it. <laughs> you can guarantee it. Why would uh, he make fun of you for s such diligent work? Because it was about lightsabers. How is that a bad thing? Because <laughs> Matt doesn't respect it. So? I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like saying how, it's like saying I'm an enemy of pizza. How could you not like or respect lightsabers? It's like a part of You know of who I heard who doesn't like pizza? Oh, here we go. Communists, terrorists. Rennie. Rennie doesn't like pizza? Well, he also doesn't drink coffee, but then again, neither do I anymore. So, come on, Ren. <laughs> Get with it. I've heard. Yeah. I haven't. Not from him. I've heard though. Right. Oh yeah, pizza fucking sucks. Can't stand this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck pizza. <clears throat> it's with with Ren. It's always like fuck fill in the blank. I was having a conversation with him because I, I used to live like right around the the block from when when I was in the oh, market. Oh, at, at the very end of the email, he says, "Also, you need to find a way to re-upload your old archived episodes as the Dropbox files are now missing. All these moments lost really? in time." Uh, I actually did archive everything before episode 50 or 60 or something, because mm -hmm. I was running out of space on Dropbox. Yeah, ass fuck. So I archived everything. If, in fact, you want those earlier episodes, you can just email us at morebetternarrative at gmail.com, and I will Gmail. happily send, li send you a zip file with them in there. I will happily send a li you a... I will zip happily zip send a, li a zip file, file you thingy send me an email up to today. you in with the episode lees in there. <laughs> so I was like... Right, at, the very, at the very end, it says, this question makes me look really cool. All right. Way to go, Andrew. Way to go. Good job, Andrew. At least his last name isn't, you know... Petrich. Oh, we actually have an email from Bernard Petrich. Bernard Petrich. And he makes fun of me. He says at the very end, he says, P.S. 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 B.J., you have no excuse that's to how mispronounce actually, my that's name. That's how it's spelled in the email. <laughs> P.S. <laughs> now, now that I've even sent you an elaborate guide on how to do it. Did you actually watch that episode? Yeah, did. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I overdubbed it. It's so it. good. It's so perfect. So you did good. Good. And then I just did another random one and you did that <laughs> yeah. one too. Well, because I went on and all of a sudden you did that. I was like, no, well, better do it. do it. You know, because <laughs> what do you have if you don't have... Petri. Exactly. I should have put like penis in there or something. <laughs> penis. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. I was talking to Ren. I was like, Ren, how do you think Philly's doing against Camden this year? Because we always talk about like uh, murder totals. He's like... Oh, fuck Camden. We're burying them. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the email from Bernard Petrich is, uh, Hi, guys. Quit complaining already. I'm writing now, ain't I? Yeah, man. Get in there. There's some pressure. <laughs> Truth is, I can't really think of any interesting question slash topic to ask you about. You blew so, it. You blew it. Obligatory fart noise. Next paragraph. One thing that might <laughs> be interesting, it. though, is your opinion you on movie-slash-TV adaptations of books. Prominent examples like Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, Dune, or Game of Thrones to get this shit going. In parentheses, also, no spoilers on Game of Thrones. I'm only at book three, and it takes some time to catch up with the series. No spoilers. I'm looking at you, Jesse. He's not here today. <laughs> yeah, but he's got, like, a, a satellite feed <laughs> Jesse all the time. So. It's going to send directly <clears throat> to him the spoiler. <laughs> That's going to be the saddest feed ever. <laughs> just like, it's just going to be... Oh, this sucks. Him with a leaf blower, just... Naked. <laughs> just, <laughs> just like giving out information about the episodes. He actually just describes each episode in this in this thing, this metaphorical satellite feed that we're talking about. I heard the word adaptation and I instantly thought of the movie Adaptation. I haven't seen that. It's a, like, work, it's a work of genius. Like yeah. I don't say that often about many like huge commercial films, but like the screenplay. There's commercials in the film. Yeah, unless we're talking about Moonstruck, Raising Arizona, and Raising Arizona. I think that's Moonstruck has Cher in it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But that's like young Nicolas Cage. Right when he had, was still missing a tooth and he was all Guido and <laughs> you know. There's that. What else is he in that? Like I mean, besides everything. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> what other good things has he been in? There's actually a really yeah. great. Uh, somebody drew a comic with Nicolas Cage, and he's just sitting there mm -hmm. like that, and it's a woman handing him a roll, and it said, uh, "Nicolas Cage finally turns down a roll 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. so it's a buttered roll. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Speaking anyway, of funny images on the internet. I can't. I'm trying to think of a way to answer Bernard's uh, question. I, I already forgot it. <clears throat> book adaptations of yeah. uh, movie adaptations of books. What good ones are there? Yeah. There aren't any. That's what are your point. opinions on them and which ones besides I, the ones I wish listed, somebody I would do an adaptation for uh, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. You, have you read that one? Awesome. Uh, shit, what else? I got nothing. I mean, now that... <laughs> the Shining. You know why? Because it strayed very far from the source material. Yeah. I never read the book. But Kubrick, it, like... <laughs> Kubrick tends to do that. He takes a lot of liberties. But he made one of the best films of all time. <laughs> I agree. You can, you can cut him some slack there. Uh, I don't know. And, and as soon as I leave here, Chrissy and I are going to drive away, and I'm going to be like, piss! I'm going to think of like seven or eight in a row, and I'm going to text you and <laughs> just add them to the show notes. Just put the put the list in front of your face. <laughs> Art school confessional. Damn it! <laughs> or whatever the fuck that movie was called. No, no. It was the what was this Dan Klaus or whatever comic that got turned into a movie, and then the movie got turned into a fucking murder mystery for no goddamn reason. Yeah. That's really weird. Whatever. This pizza is pretty good. Sin City. I mean, uh, I was actually texting Hell, Hellboy. Hellboy. Um. Now the inside of your shirt's all squishy. <laughs> Petrus. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's You'll always to... be Bernie in our hearts. <laughs> You'll always be Bernie in our emails. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, speaking of Hellboy, I went to that art show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. How'd that go? For those of you who do not know, we'll just tell the story. I'll let you. It was uh, well. I was part of this uh, group art show out in L.A. that was celebrating the 20th anniversary of Hellboy. And yay! Uh, over 200 pieces from over 100 artists. Like a lot of work there. A lot of it really good. And my piece was 18 by 24, and I was like, I'm gonna make this piece fucking big and like stand out whatever like i was in like the medium range of everything like oh. just these like they're you know guggenheim sized n- nothing well there were pretty big pieces nothing like i think the biggest was probably around like two by <clears throat> two feet by four feet something like that huh. uh shoot a plywood but it wasn't plywood it like or no the one was like three by five and it was a uh, like stretch canvas like mm. Very, but like this one was immaculate, really? just beautiful, fucking photorealistic. Like you really had to like get close to see any kind of brush strokes, and it was like traditional medium. Uh-huh. Um, it was actually just a very large laser printer. Well, <laughs> not like a lot of people did G clay prints, which is just a fancy word for inkjet printer, and it fucking drives me nuts. Like, you know, I'm primarily a digital artist, and yet I still manned up and did you know, a, like, pen and ink drawing, like, an original to hand. What the fuck? What are you doing? What are you doing? No, it has your grease on it now. No, you did the card. Yeah, there you go. Mm. Go. No. <laughs> but, uh, like, I knew two people who were out there. One of them was... In a moment, I could... No, now! I could just... <laughs> Yep, there you go. That's good. That's good. Mm. No, nope. mm. here you go. He's three. Wait, wait nope. No, I he's three. Yes, you can. No. All right, fine. So yeah, you had friends out there. Uh, I know plenty of people out in LA, but only I had four already, man. So. Okay. Do it, pussy. <laughs> I mean, I, I have a reputation to uphold. Yeah, uh, so that's why I'm doing. You know, you gotta support that. Thing. I also don't want to eat all of Chrissy's pizza before. Well, this is Chrissy's pizza, like right here. <laughs> I think it's this 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 eighth of a slice and that whole slice. Yeah. Everything else is Lucian's. This is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if you think about everything, everything Chrissy eats goes to Lucian. We're by taking default. him straight to dairy. Straight to dairy. 
Now, you know what? Gary makes him scream in pain. <laughs> Poor dude. So yeah, who was your favorite? What was your favorite piece there? Um. I mean, there was so much I couldn't remember any of the names. Jim of Food had a piece in there, which was fucking crazy. I couldn't remember any names, but this guy. Well, Jim of Food is a guy who I've I followed his work since like high school. And he's got a great name. Yeah, yeah, but he like he did uh, this comic called Girl Scouts mm -hmm. that was really good, and uh, he did the Clerks comic. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know things. But, Jim, my food boob. Yeah, my, my food boob. <laughs> my food boob. Jim, my food boob. But Tony Shaloub. Uh, Mike Mignola was there. Shaloub doob de boob. And right before I was about to leave, I went up to the guy who curated. It. The only reason I was in the show is because I went to college with this guy. And uh, <clears throat> it's not who so, you are, it's who you know. Pretty much. And before I left, he was like, "Oh, did you talk to Mike?" I know Mignola you guys. Yet? Am I going to be able to tell this fucking story? Nope. I feel like I've been telling it for like 15 minutes. <laughs> uh, and he was like, oh, come with me. And he was like, oh, Mike, this is my friend Mike. We went to college together. And I shook his hand. I'm like, oh, I'm a big fan of your work. You know, I did that piece over there. Very nice to meet you. And my buddy Joe, who curated, was like, uh, so let me ask you, Mike, what kind of music do you listen to? And he's like, oh, you know, I listen to a bunch of stuff. Like, you know, I listen to, you know, like... Tom Waits is probably my favorite, and I was like, well, Tom Waits is the man, like, that dude knows shit. <clears throat> yeah. He's like, tell the story about, like, how he met him and how he was starstruck and whatever, oh, wow. and uh, then my buddy was like, oh, well, do you listen to any metal at all? <laughs> and he just goes, no. <laughs> and I was like, all right. I'm not a part of this anymore. Good, <laughs> and, good to meet you. Uh, so, like, I watched him and Joe talk for a minute, and... Uh, I was like, all right, I hate to do this, but I really have to get going. I'm still on East Coast time. Uh, you know, let me give you my business card. Like, uh, it's the thing to do. But as we like to say on the East Coast, here, you throw this out. He goes, yeah, yeah. okay. Okay. And then I left. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Shot down by Shub de Fubub. Fubub de Fubub. Well, we're proud of you that you went out there and did that and did the thing. So It was fun. LA was great. Were you wearing pants? I can't pants? stand LA. Really? Oh my gosh. I'm not a fan of LA. Not even a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because it's like uh, a giant. It's like. It's like New Jersey, but with like more pretense. <clears throat> In other words. Those are big words. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you're from Jersey, pretense means. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, you fucking pleb. You go figure it out. <clears throat> Just Google it. Oh, fuck Jersey. Uh, yeah. No, I, <clears throat> I can't say that I've I've really enjoyed any of the time that I spent in L.A. I mean, playing at the Troubadour was awesome because mm -hmm. you get to shit in the same toilet as Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue, and the sound system there is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Shake your guts right out. But dealing with the people there, eh, not so much. Like I L.A. Think we played there and then, we were there and then Orange, some Orange County people. Just great on my last fucking nerve, you know. Mm. Maybe it's just like being from the Northeast my whole life. You right. Know, you have to endure winter. My, so it my offers only... you a, a reality-based perspective on shit instead of just like, mm, whatever. That was kind of the impression that I got when I was in San Diego, but not so much when I was in L.A. Like, the people in San Diego just live in this fucking bubble of just happiness and like <laughs> perpetual <laughs> oh, yeah. degree weather. And then they're like, so, like... This is the only time when I've looked at a place and just been like, you guys are too free. Like, <laughs> You need some I was I was waiting for a friend at like some street corner, and then just going down the street was this like old, like first-generation hippie just riding down the street on a unicycle. And I'm just like, just stop. Stop. Just fucking, fucking stop. stop. <laughs> um, you know, kick you can do what you head. want. Yeah. Just know that you're wrong. <laughs> um... <laughs> But when I was in L.A., like, I got to go to Amoeba, I got to go to vacation, I got to go to... Amoeba's okay, yeah. Amoeba's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, you know what, though? If I had to pick a, an East Coast city, or, like, at least a Californian city, mm -hmm. San Francisco. Like, easily. I, I've only spent maybe, Coast? like, eight hours in San Francisco, and it was for a funeral, so it was already, oh. like, tainted. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, San Francisco is nice, but, like, you know, I went to this, like, tiny-ass uh, video game spot in L.A. Uh -huh. called World 8. And the dude there was, like, so goddamn nice. Granted, like, I walked out with $100 worth of shit, but, like, he was, like, 
I didn't really have any problem with the people there. Granted, I'm not talking to like any, you know, big shots. For sure. Yeah. I'm I'm with the commoners, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I don't know. It was fun. It was good to get away. And I saw fucking Rob Lowe at LAX. I was like inches away from him, and I didn't even realize it for like the first like thirty seconds. Really? He was Did just you... some dude in line in front you of me. You breathe and I was the like, same air as Rob. Oh my god, he's a handsome fucking man. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't think that he dude, actually ages. No, he really does not. <laughs> like, the only way that you would know is that he has some gray in his hair. Everything else is just like... He's like I bet that he put, dude looks better than me. I bet he puts that there just to take suspicion off of him. He's like the Patrick Stewart of actors. <laughs> <laughs> Except still alive. Patrick Stewart's dead? Oh, yeah, I was thinking Patrick Swayze. Uh, you just ruined yeah. it. No, that's... It's, that's, it's alright. Nothing's ruined. We're, you know... Isn't Patrick Stewart an actor? <sighs> Oh, death metal. <laughs> Just wear a sneeze, bro. <laughs> Yo, do you even lift, bro? Yeah. <laughs> no, the best is uh, have you ever seen it? It's a, a a meme with it's like an old painting. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but basically, Zuntite. <laughs> uh, he uh, he says everything in like old tiny. <laughs> so he's pointing. Yes, he's just like. He's oh, like that, yeah, but yeah, he's stressed. Yeah, yeah. But um, disregard female, acquire currency. Yes, but the, there, <laughs> there's there's a great one that, that takes. Do you even lift, bro? Yeah, and it's a, it's it's a brethren. Dost, dost thou even th- hoist? <laughs> <laughs> uh, something I found today while I was surfing the interwebs. Uh, it, it's taking humor from a tragedy kind of thing. Uh, where, what was it, the, the, uh, the teenagers that were kidnapped Mm -hmm. in a place? Nigeria? Yeah. Um, but Michelle Obama (laughs) did the, the bring back our girls sign. Well, look at the pouty face. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going to put it up on the thing. We can do that now. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) The power of editing. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. But the funny thing is, uh, the the post on Reddit that I found had that on it, which says, <laughs> "Don't hold up signs on the internet. Bad people will change what they say." And yeah. oh, and so somebody posted this with with just a blank piece, and they went to town, and uh, I'm just going <clears throat> to. What sound I'm just going to show that, and that was <laughs> yeah. quite possibly the best one. There were a lot of others, but I think Dick Butt is my favorite. Well, Dick... <laughs> I saw one that was a, a gif of Blue's Clues, oh. and, like, the dude's getting a letter. <sighs> the Obama poster Dick Butt? <laughs> it was, like, this very long, drawn-out, like, animated gif of just, like, the letter shows up and it's all fucking dancing around and like whatever. And the guy's like saying something to the screen and the thing goes on for like a minute and then finally he opens it up and it, it, he opens it up and it just says dick butt. Dick butt, dick butt is like the new Baba Booey. Do you know what, it, do you know what dick butt's actually from? It's one of those things that's been around. I, I forget what the actual comics name is and I'll maybe post it when I find it. But, uh, the whole thing, it's, it's a, it's a comic strip. It's like, four or five panels or something. Basically, it's the child childhood of this animator or of this cartoonist. This Penny Arcade, is it? My, no, no, it's it's the... the. Ah, oh, damn, I can't remember. Ugh. I don't think it's Penny Arcade. But basically, this child uh, talks to this tree, and he's, he's like, I'm sorry, you know, all your resources are wasted. I will never let another piece of paper go go to waste and then the last frame is him with like this very sad face and you look down it's just this piece of paper that has dick butt on it <laughs> oh dick butt i've dick seen butt. pictures on the internet of, of dick butt tattoos like real ones yeah yeah can't be any worse than a people oh. interracial gay sex tattoo though right they have huh? those yeah <laughs> yeah i have one of those oh you do yeah look at <laughs> interracial gay sex nice isn't that great I like it but it, it looks classy enough to be like the logo of a law firm or some shit <laughs> law firm I like it I'd like to help you with that okay 
Bend over. <sighs> Rob Fusco, attorney at law. <laughs> Who's my partner? Ben. Bend Yay. over. So, to, to end off this beautiful episode, I found old pictures that I found for for Monsieur Justin, who is doing the <clears throat> the Rosetta documentary, which I think he said is coming out the end of this year or somewhere about. Uh, but he wanted to, he wanted old pictures of me and my drums. So this one, I found a bunch of Polaroids, and they're pretty awesome. This is my first drum set ever. Aww. It is a it was it was a rented drum set my mom got me to make sure that I like actually wanted to play drums. So she got that for me, and I played the crap out of it, mm-hmm. and it was awesome, and it was snakeskin. Wow. Uh, and then <clears throat> the drum set that she actually got me, and then I threw stickers on it and put buffle rings in it and all that stuff. So that was my first drum set ever. Uh, and then there's me actually sitting at the drum set. Wow. <laughs> Your hat's on backwards. I know. It's the only way I could play correctly. <laughs> Who's that youngin'? It's Matt Are you ready to go over the top? <laughs> pulling rob yeah. but the best thing that came out of finding these polaroids is the fact that i used to work at a camp and i used to work at the horse compound of is the camp turn into a nazi story no unfortunately not no he was um a stud handler but mm. but you used to have to go in on the weekends do it. <laughs> the, the the three people that the two people that i worked with we traded off going into the stables to uh like clean feed and get the horses out <laughs> we used to clean the horses <laughs> oh god clean the horses but we would trade off get every them out somehow yeah exactly they were crusty seriously when they popped oh, out they were all crusty no. okay that's oh, so finish cold. the story yeah. anyway um i went up one weekend to Take Instead care of, of the horses. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and Monsieur Matthew Weed came with me. You just peed a little. Uh, <laughs> so I have a picture of Matt Weed on a horse. Oh no! This is the follow-up oh. to Rick to Life on mm-hmm. horse. <laughs> so this is me on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Nothing is... says metal like, <laughs> quite like, like a, a plaid shirt on a horse wearing a bike helmet. <laughs> uh, this is me laying down <laughs> towards the butt of a horse. Just, you know, in case you couldn't <laughs> smell it enough. Shit. Oh, wow. And then this is Matt Weed in the helmet. <laughs> Seems right. Yep. And then that is a photoshopable This is image. Matt Weed on a horse. <laughs> Matt Weed on a horse dot com. Yep. But that no. previous image is so photoshopable, don't you think? Oh yeah. But this one? Yeah. No. I think we genuinely have to start myspace.com slash Matt Weed on a horse. Okay. Yeah. I'm is my it. MySpace still around? Yeah. Really? Are you, are you gonna be the uh, MySpace boss of that don't Oh yeah, and then there's well, just Matt. All you sitting... have to do is fucking just put it up and let it Then do there's Matt thing. sitting on a fence in an ISIS t-shirt. Which ISIS, though? <laughs> yeah. It looks... The fake one. The fake one. It's the fake ISIS. Oh, yeah. The fucking poser the, one. Hey, mosquito control, we're fake. Not the official <laughs> one with the, the, the drummer who had Cooper Rose. Oh, he had the coolest haircut ever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... <sighs> We've eaten almost all the pizza, and I'm BJ McMurtry. I'm Rob Fusco. I'm Michael Wahlberg. And here's to you, Bernhard Petrich. Petrich. Thank you for listening to the More Better Narrative Podcast. Find us at mbnpodcast.com or on iTunes. For more information, visit us on Twitter or Facebook at mbnpodcast.com or email us at morebetternarrative at gmail.com.